welcome to the projects module upgrade webinar. I'm really excited to show you this sneak peek. Um, my name is Arielle. I'm head of product marketing here and I'm with Jeff, our CEO. We're really excited to jump into it and uh, show you some of the cool stuff we've been working on. So without further ado, here's Jeff. Hi everyone, thanks for coming along. So we're a couple of minutes getting started there. Um, we've, we've had a bit of bad luck today with our, uh, our webinaring and there was actually a magic button we still had to press um, on one of our accounts to, uh, to get things live and running. It would help our sanity muchly if you've got two seconds to just go to the chat window and let us know you can hear us um, and make sure that we're up and running and you can see the screen. We just, uh, as I said, would, uh, would really hate to be carrying on without you. Um, excellent. We've got lots of people saying they can hear us. Wonderful. That makes Ariel and I very <laughs> happy. Oh dear. Um, anyway, sorry. Getting back to getting back to the uh, the sneak peek. Um, we're we're really excited to be sharing this sneak peek with you all today for a few reasons. Um, the first one is this this module is very much at the heart of how our clients use Excel, and we know there's shortcomings with it, and so and we're not happy about them. And so this is really a chance for us to uh, to be able to. Um, ramp things up and and give you all a much better Excello experience. The other reason we're excited, aside from the fact that this is going to be a big improvement we've been working on for a while, is we're actually going to be able to sort of be you know sort of metaphorically hold hands um, with the projects module upgrade for the next few weeks, and all of you who who are Excello users we'll be able to start using this module that I demonstrate for you today immediately, basically. You can just get started on it straight away and I'll cover how in this call. Um, what's great is that any changes that you make during this beta period um, or any time you're using the beta version of Excello, you'll actually be able to, you'll have all of those changes take effect in your, your other instance or in the other domain. So it's really, uh, you get a chance to dive in and. There's stuff that we're still working on, so if it ends up being a, a dead end or, or the user experience isn't what you were hoping for, you can always just jump back over into um, the good old fashioned way. Um, so yeah, basically it's, it's exciting because we get to share new things and you get to play with them, which is pretty awesome. All right, so let's get started here. As, uh, as mentioned at the top, the Projects module on Excello is actually our most popular. It's the second most actively used screen in the entire product, following on just barely behind the View Client or View Contact screen. <coughs> Pardon me. And uh, <coughs> however, this really important screen has a few shortcomings. One of them that um, certainly was at the top of my priority list when we were getting our plans together of what improvements to make with this round of, of upgrades was the screen was really slow when you were actually trying to make changes and do things. So if you've got you know, a project that's got 10 milestones and each of those has got five tasks, you need your users, your people who are doing that work to be able to come in quickly and activate and complete things as, they were, as they've been working on them. You need to be able to quickly log time and see it reflect in terms of um, you know, sort of budget usage. And the sad truth is for a lot of, um, for the current view project screen, pretty much every time you needed to make those changes is required a full screen reload, which is really painful and, you know, not really necessary. It was necessary uh, when we first built this module because of the way everything fitted together. Um, but the engineering team were given a pretty, pretty serious challenge of make a complex um, multi-dependent screen able to, to work um, intelligently on the client side, um, which has been working well. Um, the other thing is, and it's sim in a similar vein, it hasn't been optimized for people doing their job. So we've got the reporting across the top with the dials and stuff like that, which is you know, really sexy for project managers and, and you know, certainly goes, goes well when it comes to doing demos for new users. But on a day-to-day -day basis, a lot of the time when you get into the project screen, you want to see where's the project up to, what milestones have I got going on, um, where am I up to with, uh, with my tasks. And squishing those further down the screen just meant for a bunch of irritation for people. Another thing that we wanted to do was, was improve the team dimension, um, the fact that projects are, are tackled by project teams and making it a lot easier to designate 
who is part of your team as opposed to just inferring um, that someone's got a milestone that they're the owner of or a task that they're assigned to. And so we wanted to fix that. And the last major one that we wanted to fix with this upgrade <clears throat> was correcting some assumptions that we made in incorrectly um, around materials expenses and budget usage. <clears throat> so for example, um, a lot of our users are actually using the expenses module, not for keeping track of you know, a taxi fare on the way to a client meeting, but are actually using it for key parts of their project delivery, such as contracting out a chunk of work to another company or agency um, and needing to track that as consumed um, budget as opposed to something that maybe just gets added on top from a billing perspective. Um, so we wanted to change, allow you to, to uh, see your budget usage in a way that makes sense for your business. And so, yeah, our objective is basically to, to fix all of these issues. Um, and there's a few more as well. So let's jump into the demo. Now, what I've got here in the, my next two tabs, this is a, an example of our current um, project screen. And just calling out a couple of those things that were, that were slight frustrations. Um, the first one was uh, the, the reloading, everything taking forever. So I'm like, all right, I've got this active task here. Now I want to complete that. It's a milestone, I should say. So now we wait, we wait, we wait, we wait, we wait, we wait, we wait. Screen does full reload. We're still waiting and we've just completed a milestone and had the screen load up. So now if you've got 10 of those to do, that's really frustrating. Um, and the other thing is, as mentioned, the services, what is the work, what are we doing, is all living down here, which is almost off the screen when I first come in. I can only see two of my milestones because I've got all of this budget and, and progress and other details occupying the top area, which isn't great for people who just need to get in and do their work. So what we have done with the new upgrade is move some things around and improved how it works. So let's look at the new screen together. Okay, so this is the new project view screen. You'll note that we now have the overview tab here focused entirely on what's actually happening inside the project. So I can see I've got my, my milestones and then I've got my tasks. I'm also able to expand and, and collapse all of those details. So if you wanna see the whole thing rather than having to, to drop over the arrow in just the right spot time after time after time, you can just hit the expandy guy and see the whole lot or you can collapse everything up so that all the tasks are tucked away underneath the milestones. So in this example here, um, we've got a, a project and what we've also done with these milestones is we're making it a lot clearer what work is unallocated. So the concept of unallocated has actually always been in the background in Excello in the projects module. The idea is that you create your milestones in your project planning phase, you allocate a budget to those guys, and then you carve out that time, you allocate that time to tasks as you're working on the project. And while you can certainly create tasks um, in your project planning phase, and a lot of our clients do, um, we tend to recommend for the purposes of being agile and reacting to reality, as opposed to putting together a perfect plan that then has to be wrestled with as the project unfolds, um, that you create your milestones and then um, you then allocate the time into tasks as you go. And so we've done a much better job now of actually calling out in this pink area here, how much time isn't allocated yet? How much time can still be allocated to tasks inside of the budgets that the milestone had set? And so um, that's a, a big improvement and we think it'll actually help users a heck of a lot um, because it's much more obvious what's going on there. Now, another thing that's great is the ability for us to um, change things without having to do full screen reloads. So right here, I'll take this task. Um, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna complete that task right now. I'm actually gonna do a complete screen reload, which we don't normally do. We don't have to do too much because I wanna demonstrate how we're using the same backend data to drive both the beta view and the, uh, and the live or non-beta view. So on, you might remember on the old tab, I actually did the complete task and you know, you saw how long it took for the screen to reload. Now what I'll do is I'll activate this particular implementation guy here. 
boom, boom, boom in the background, emails are being sent, dates are being updated, and now that task is active, no screen reload. And there's no reason why as a user, I would have to sit around and wait for it. So I could activate this and I can come in here and create an activity, put some details in here, doing some, some work. Here is our work. And I can put you know four hours of the work in there and hit save and have that take effect. What you'll also probably notice if you're uh, quick, looking quickly <laughs> with your eyes, you might notice as well that we changed the budget usage here. And while the flood bar mathematics needs a little bit of work because we're obviously only 5% of budget usage, so the flood bar showing at 50 is a little bit aggressive. Um, so that's an example of where we're in beta at the moment. Um, that the fact that the data is changing in real time without screen reloading, and we're also changing things like the earned value over here, which is our new way of describing usage and, we, and is more conformant with uh, good project management practice. Um, the earned value over here increases as we go along as well. Um, the, the sections that were in the top of the overview tab have actually been mostly pushed across to the left here. So <clears throat> earned value is usage. Um, and we've got the progress representation as well as further down being able to see the, the schedule and how much time's being used or allocated um, as per our project plan. A couple of other things on, on the left-hand side that are worth calling out though, is a new section we're calling team. So for anyone who used to use the contributors functionality in Excello, a way for you to take um, work that was, um, you know, sort of being managed, sorry, contributors have always been a way for you to add a customer contact who's not actually the client um, to some work that you're doing. So they could be a partner who's doing the implementation or they could be a vendor that you need to track your email activity with around the project itself. And so you can go through and add them as a contributor. What we're doing with this upgrade, and we're actually gonna do this across the entire product, is we're upgrading that concept of a contributor and we're actually gonna start and we're rolling it out as the team. And a team member can include both client contacts as well as your colleagues. And so here, for example, I've got my team. I'm gonna add Malin in here, for example. So I just start typing his name. And it comes through, here's Malin, our colleague. Um, we can choose what type of participant he is. So I'd say he's gonna be an advisor, but you, you can have whatever types you like there. They're all custom fields or custom types, just like we have um, for, for all of the other um, sort of pro things in Excello. And then you're also potentially able to choose statuses as well, which you don't have to have, but you can have. Um, you can provide an optional description. You can automatically include them on activities that you send out. And you can also have these custom fields here. So in this case, an advisor is somebody who has a position and skills and a location, but somebody else might have other, other fields or other values that matter for them. Um, so put, uh, put Malin's details in here. Let's say he's a designer and he's also got a project management and I can designate what his location is. And so now we've got this team area that enables you to assemble the team that's working on the project um, and also assemble client contacts and people who aren't even at that same client account. So, as I said, that contributor functionality remains. It's just been upgraded now into the team module. Another thing we're doing with team is we're making it easy from a permissions point of view. So that when you grant or when you make a colleague a team member, you can actually designate the permissions that that person gets for the project automatically. Um, and those permissions follow based on the type. These advisory, for example, is a, you know, our, our type here, but you can have it to be engineer versus designer or somebody else, and then have their permissions flow the way that you want them to be. A Couple of other little things that we're doing. Um, we've enabled you to, to change the word that we've traditionally used as manager, which is the concept of ownership or who's running a project. Um, and so now you can actually rename that yourself in the back end. Uh, and we'll also be going through for all new accounts that sign up into the future and using the word owner instead of manager. Um, it was one of those things that we, we decided to use the word manager a long time ago and we really wish we hadn't. 
Um, it just means different. It, it really, for a lot of folks, means someone who's got a certain level of, of sort of organizational seniority as opposed to a representation of the fact that they're the most responsible person for this project. They're the owner of this project. So, um, yeah, we're, we're making that change uh, going forward, but we won't force it upon you. So you can do whatever you want to do. Um, all right, the last thing I want to show you here is a new tab we're calling Insights. So our new Insights tab here is really taking some of the cool things that we had going on at the top of the project view screen before around profitability forecasting and stuff like that and actually breaking it out and making it a whole lot uh, more specific. So what I can see here, this data, <clears throat> and if you get in here and actually start playing with this yourselves um, today, what you'll realize is that the data is completely static right now. None of this is actually representing reality. This is our engineers building it as we speak. Um, and as we ship this out, um, you'll be seeing updates to this code probably once a day for the next couple of weeks. Um, and we'll be able to let you know when uh, those sorts of improvements um, go live. But yeah, basically we've got um, a new tab here, which gives you a visual representation of what work has been going on on the project. Um, we've got more detail around the earned value and the forecasted value. So these numbers are placeholder numbers right now. But the idea is that as you work on the project and people re-estimate time remaining as they log their hours or create tasks, then what you're able to do is see these, these bar charts move together um, and predict when there's going to be a problem before you actually have a problem. Similarly, we have current and forecast profitability laid next to each other now for the first time. Whereas back in our example over here, you had to toggle between them, which meant, you know, probably having to memorize, okay, profit was 812. Now, okay, it's recommending that, you know, it's, it's a little bit uh, janky. So very much the priority to go through and, and show you these details next to each other so that you can make decisions. And we've also got a table of data here. A lot of folks really want to be able to chew through information in a more of a tabular numeric form. So not just pretty pictures. So you can see a breakdown of what the budget was, what the earned value is for services, materials, and expenses, what the costs have been, profit, and then any amounts that you've invoiced as well. <clears throat> and obviously this all complies with the permissions model we use for whether to show costs and whether to show profitability so that only a subset of users get to do that. And then we've got a new section here for work, which will use circular diagrams, are actually still very much works in progress design-wise, um, to give you a breakdown of billable versus non-billable, how much time's remaining and how much time's unallocated. And so you can see how the project's faring and if it's gonna go over, we'll be using red colors to represent the amount of overage that we're, uh, we can see I'll either currently or in forecasted terms. And with pretty much all of these, there's a hover state that breaks out the details a lot more for you. Lastly, uh, the team are working on um, a couple of leaderboards that enable you to see team member by team member who's done the most work on a project and how they're going at, at delivering on budget. Uh, so it's all well and good to be logging lots of work, but if everything you're doing is massively over budget, that's probably not um, reason alone to, to high five somebody. Um, so we'll, we'll represent both of those. And the idea is to, uh, to quickly show who's been making the biggest contribution to the project um, and also make it, um, you know, sort of a little bit of uh, positive competition for folks to um, in an org. Uh, a lot of the other parts of the, this, uh, the screens are getting a little facelift. So expenses tab, materials will actually be coming in here deliberatively, so you won't just be limited to adding materials from the project planning screen. Um, so yeah, there's a few few little tweaks and improvements we're making across the top because it is getting a little, and it's also getting a little bit crowded. So there'll be a few little cosmetic changes there. Um, and then in the project planning screen, we've actually got some a bunch of things that we're working on, but for this release, for this month, um, and in this beta, what we'll be doing is is kind of curbing our enthusiasm a little bit. Um, we'd love to you know, completely replace the Gantt chart, the engine, we'd love to do lots of things. Um, but the priority is gonna be around making it clearer and easier what's going on with budgeting. 
Um, the main reason for that is because now we're going to allow you to designate on a project by project basis, as well as what you want the defaults to be for your organization. As you um, incur expenses and as you um, create and, and add materials, um, we allow you to choose whether you want to treat those as things that go on top of the budget that you set out for the project or whether they're things that get slotted in and fit inside of a fixed price budget that you identified for the client. So if you're the kind of organization that charges everything T&M, then you can keep working the way things are now <clears throat> with the benefit that now you'll be seeing the expenses and the materials in your own value calculations. If you're the kind of organization that does fixed price <coughs> projects and whether <coughs> the the work is being done by an internal team burning up hours at a billable rate, or whether it's being done by an external contractor who sends you an invoice and you need to enter it as an expense, um, then you'll be able to, to live in that world as well and have those values and that time eat up into a project budget um, and represent in profitability and or forecasting intelligently too. All right, I think, um, that was pretty much all I wanted to cover from a demo point of view. Uh, as mentioned at the top of the call, great news is you're all able to use this today. The way that you use this is you go into whatever your current domain is, yourdomain.excello.com, um, and you just add projects before the .excello.com. So yourdomain.projects.excello.com is where you log in. Now, for those of you that are using Google Apps for single sign-in, Unfortunately, you will have to use the username and password option. Um, we wish it wasn't this way, but the, the way it works when you do a single sign-in with Google is Google sends you back to where basically we have, we, we can only tell it to send you back to one place basically, um, which unfortunately is not this beta account, otherwise everyone would be pushed in that direction. So you will have to use the username and password um, login method um, to use this beta. Now, there's going to be more work coming in, in uh, the days and weeks ahead. Um, work in the project plan improvements, especially around budgeting. As mentioned, that insights tab is currently static content. That'll come to life. And we're also going to be improving the way that we do dates and representing dates on projects, including allowing you to designate what we're calling a key date. Um, so that's the most important date for the project that might not be the built-in ones like, you know, um, commenced or due or complete dates that we have built into the product. They could be custom things that make sense to you. And <clears throat> you'll also be able to designate that, you'll be able to change what that date is as the project moves through its cycle. So in the early phase of a project, when you're doing all of your initial preliminary work, the key date could be um, when, when you need to start your pilot or when you need to, you know, an, maybe a, a partial delivery date. Um, and then as you're actually going through your implementation, the key date might then become the go live date. Uh, and so you'll be able to <clears throat> have what users see as the most important date um, change based on the phase of the project. We're aiming for a couple of weeks of this beta period. Um, we haven't really <clears throat> done a beta quite like this for a long time. Um, the invoicing beta, which is our last major hall of work, um, was unfortunately not able to synchronize with your live data. So it's really a play or a sandbox environment. Um, whereas this is a, a beta that you can actually use in anger um, to do your work today. And so the fact that it's going to be a lot more engaging and collaborative means um, we're, we're basically going to uh, iterate through the beta period um, and we'll be in touch with an email to all of our users, letting them know when the actual rollout or go live is going to happen for everybody. And we'll be supporting that with things like videos and other information so that your users don't get whiplash. So that's the update. Um, love to field any questions. Ariel sitting next to me has got a mountain in front of her I can see on the screen there. Yeah. So we've got a few. Yeah, the let's The first let's one into is it. from Mark. Um, and he wants to know what does the allocation look for defined versus roll up in the milestone stage? Can you give us the definition of earned value? I might need that question again. There's a bit in there. Uh, the, what does the allocation look for defined versus roll up in the milestone stage? Can you give us the definition of earned value? Sure. 
Um, that, that first part, I'm not, still not sure I completely follow it. So it might be one to take offline, but the way that we've, we've built um, the budgeting into Excello is you can have milestones and even sub milestones. And those are the things where you tend to allocate budget. You can do it on tasks as well, um, but they tend to be the place where you allocate budget and they represent the, the rolling up of all of their sub milestones and sub tasks. So effectively, it's a bit like a, a tree with branches coming into a trunk um, and the project is the trunk and then the major branches are milestones and then the minor branches are, are tasks and, and the weight of the project flows all the way through the trunk. Um, so that's how it works. You can uh, provide budgets both on a milestone itself. So you can designate X number of hours and a price for that milestone. And you can also designate um, the work underneath it and we'll represent the, the budget when we look at it here as a, as a cumulative um, of how it's come together. So you're able to see that more easily. One thing I didn't show you either is you're able to change your view here between profit, earned value and time. And to answer the question on what is earned value, earned value is basically the sum of all of the work that has been done. So it's hours logged, it's materials that, that you, and you choose whether you want your materials to appear in earned value at the beginning or whether you just want it to appear at the end. Um, <clears throat> because we do have some users where they're gonna look at things like profitability and if it's a 10K project, and 5K of that is a, is a, is a material, a thing they're selling, um, but maybe is a low margin sale and 5K of that value is the, is the services work, which is higher margin. Um, we hate the idea for, for forcing those people to have an experience where on day one of the project that shows 50% of budget used and um, your profit margin is terrible because you, uh, you know, you've, you've on sold this piece of hardware for a, for a fixed price. But conversely, um, keeping materials out, which is what we do at the moment, um, means that people who are very material driven um, in terms of their project plans uh, are very frustrated that the earned value doesn't represent um, the sum of all the things that they've done. So earned value is really the sum of hours, materials and expenses, but with you able to choose at what point they get, uh, they get recognized. And then Brendan had a question a bit earlier on um, asking, is it predictive? Are warning signs highlighted? Um, it is a little bit, Brendan. Um, so we've got under the insights area, you'll be able to see the details um, of the forecast. And we actually have for all of our premium users, triggers functionality already available in the projects module where you can designate the, the warning states. So <clears throat> if your profit margin that you think is, is the right profit margin is say 20%, you can get a notification when the forecast of that profit margin drops below 20%, for example. But other organizations might think that the um, appropriate profit margin is you know, 10 times that. Um, so, well, not 10 times that, but they might be you know 40%, for example. Um, so you get to choose what those warning states are through the triggers module. And then Dan had a question, given that everything runs off a code base at the moment, if we add someone to the team in the beta site, what does this do to the standard view, i.e. add a contributor? Great question, and I can show you. And so here we actually have Ariel and one added as contributors now. Um, while the interface is more ghetto, as you can see here, we actually do support it, and you can see them in there. And then John had a question, can you export the insights table in a report for all projects? Um, you can't export the insights table as a, as you know, sort of the, um, as a designated thing. I'm trying to work out how to, how to answer that. Um, you can certainly, you know, screen cap, uh, save to PDF. There's a few ways to, to get that out, um, but it is designed to be something that you interact with, with all of its hover states and things to that effect. Um, what we aren't tackling right now is the sort of, you know, cumulative or collective rolling up um, of, of the information into overall project views um, at this time. But it is something that we are ever conscious of and wanting to do um, improvements around that area. Um, and Stefan had a question. Can you set triggers based on earned value versus project value? Uh, I don't see why not, Stefan. Um, you'd be able to say, okay, if the in the current 
wording, we call it usage, and that's what it would be reflected as if you were playing with triggers right now. Um, you could say, yeah, if, uh, if project value is, is greater than X and earned value is um, over Y, then, then send, a, send a trigger, um, send a notification. Uh, we actually do have ones already that handle things like going over budget, if that's what you're actually shooting for. If you really want to you know, sort of get a notification when you're over budget, um, we already have that out of the box as well. You can designate budget percentage warnings. So if the project's at 60%, you can get a notification. At 90%, you get another notification and, and you know, so on. So you've got the power to do all of those things right now through triggers. Um, and that will be maintained as earned value um, through this upgrade as well. And Max wants to know, will it be possible to add, edit the status of milestones and tasks in the future? Um, in terms of creating custom statuses, I think is probably what you mean. Um, we've actually got that under the hood um, and we haven't, we're gonna roll it out for tasks, but we haven't rolled it out just yet um, because we need to upgrade the task board. So our kind of internal priorities here in terms of the, you know, the quarterly priorities blog post that went out last week, this is number one, uh, the, the scheduling upgrade is number two, and then after that is the task board, the task upgrade. So um, once you've got custom task boards, um, then being able to have custom statuses becomes a possibility. Um, so yeah, we're working towards that. And uh, Regina, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, wants to know, are there plans to improve the project timeline so that we can extract a Gantt chart for our clients? Uh, not right now, not as part of this upgrade. Um, one of the things we'd love to do in the project planning screen is really you know, rip out and replace the, the Gantt chart. Unfortunately, it's uh, a lot easier said than done. We actually did a bunch of proof of concept work there. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's uh, not a small challenge. So we opted to break this upgrade into a couple of pieces and the Gantt chart um, <clears throat> will have to be something that, that uh, survives for another day to be uh, burned with fire and upgraded. Um, what we are working on, what you can do now, a lot of our users don't realize this, is you can actually share the Gantt chart um, and your progress with clients through the client portal today um, in Excello. And with the client portal upgrades, which we've made a start on, um, but they're going to be something that, that ships in Q2, I expect, um, that that portal upgrade is actually going to be bringing your users into more of the, the mainline products, so to speak, with custom branding and, and custom um, color selections and things like that to be able to see subsets of what's going on on a project too. Um, and this question is from Dean. Any plans to incorporate the new insights tab into the retainers or support contracts screen? Yeah, great question. And in short, yes, um, we don't have, it's not being actively worked on right now, um, but the idea is to, uh, we took the model with the insights tab um, with the intent to be able to reuse it more widely. And obviously <clears throat> the, uh, obviously it's, it's well worth putting into something like the contracts or retainers module because those contracts or client service agreements last for a long time. Um, we could put it into the tickets module. I don't know how much user would honestly get just because the tickets tend to be up and over a bit more quickly. Um, but yes, it's the intent is to take the design patterns and the approaches that we've been using in projects land um, and apply them more widely across the product. And Brian has a question. Um, he's saying we are a consulting business and do a lot of projects that have deadlines. Um, example, something is due on an exact date. I've always struggled to lock a key date into Excel or project plan and then find it quickly later. How does this new module help us set and, man and manage key dates? Here's from Brisbane. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, so I can't show it to you now because it's still being worked on, but what we're doing is changing our dates down on the left-hand side here. So instead of them being the built-in ones that we sort of just tell you this is what it is, um, you'll actually be able to designate what dates and you're able to have custom fields, um, the extension fields that Excello supports. So the combination of having custom fields and then being able to choose that when the project is in an active status, then we want to show a particular date. That's how we'll be handling that. And let's see, Paul wants to know, can we add three staff to one task to allow them to get a task and complete it? Yeah, so the way that we're going to be handling that one, Paul, is each task still has an owner, um, the person who's, who's responsible for its successful delivery. Um, 
What we're going to be adding in though is the ability, <coughs> pardon me, and we'll, uh, we'll also do it, we'll do it not just on tasks, but also on milestones. Add the ability for you to assign multiple people um, to have their schedule impacted by that task. And we're doing that as part of the scheduling upgrade. So you'll be able to say, okay, this is a milestone for design, for example, um, which I think is the, the, the scenario we're playing with here. Um, and then in this milestone, we are gonna say that Ariel and Juan and Malin are equally responsible from an allocation point of view for this you know, 60 odd hour um, budget here. And then that will represent automatically across their, their schedule. So we're tackling that as part of the scheduling upgrade. Um, so hopefully that answers your question there. And uh, sorry, Stephen, I called you Stefan before. Sorry about that. Um, but he wants to know: Does the API expose posting milestones budget figures? Um, Ex oh, sorry, expose posting milestone budget figures. Um, I we're not making any major changes to the API with this upgrade, Stephen. Um, so it's uh, the answer is as it is right now, uh, and I can't recall off the top of my head what it is right now. One of the challenges with the API and creating project plans and messing around with project plans is there's a bunch of rules like dependencies, making sure you don't get stuck in dependency loops, um, the kind of roll up and calculation nature of budgets, um, which if you're using an API and you're just like creating milestones one at a time, it's unfortunately quite easy to, um, to end up getting yourself into it tied up in knots. Um, so that's why the, the API is a little bit more limited, but certainly feel free to follow up with that um, to share the specifics. And Dan wants to know, does this module upgrade, upgrade bring any new Zapier hooks along with it? Um, not just yet, Dan. Um, we'll be adding new Zapier hooks pretty continuously over the next few months. Um, for those who, who maybe aren't familiar with it, Zapier is a, a new product that we just, or it's not a new product, it's a new integration that we've just released. Um, and it allows you to synchronize some details and some data in Excello. Um, with then 700 products that are part of the Zapier ecosystem um, that also connect with it. Our focus initially has been on customer data and on requests. Our next step will be pro uh, sales. Um, and then after that, probably tickets. Um, projects being more complicated, beast means that we'll tackle them a little bit later on. One of the other things we want to do is enable you to actually des designate webhooks as part of your progressions though. Um, and that's the sort of thing that we'll look to roll out everywhere at once. So you'll be able to say, okay, projects just move from, you know, active to delivered, um, fire a webhook across to Zapier and, and be able to have a Slack notification or an email sent or update another product or something like that. And Stephen also wants to know, can you take a spreadsheet with milestones and budgets and, and load it into Excel? Uh, can you take a spreadsheet? spreadsheet with milestones and budgets and load it in? Not, not at the moment. Um, we're, we're not sort of tackling the import um, any further than we currently have um, in terms of the, this upgrade. And Alan wants to know about integrating Team Gantt or Smartsheets. Yeah, um, we don't have any plans on either of those at the moment, Alan. Um, I think it's... We need to have a closer look at, at the scenarios there. Um, but yeah, nothing nothing at this time. Uh, that looks like it's everything. Excellent. Cool. Well, feel free to fire in any more questions that you have to support at Excello.com. Um, for those that, but just to recap, this is available for you all now in beta. And we're hoping that it's only gonna be a few weeks of beta and we'll be able to uh, release it for all of our users. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to email support at Excello.com. Thanks so much for coming along today and uh, look forward to uh, hearing your feedback around this new module. Bye. Bye, everyone.